Proactive Compliance, sponsored by Nitro Security. I'm Greg Masters, Managing Editor of SC Magazine, and presenting next is Mel Shakir, CTO at Nitro Security. Mel is responsible for developing and implementing the company's overall technology vision, including next generation application and database security management solutions. Today he will be discussing a new proactive compliance model that improves security while fitting compliance into day-to-day -day business operations. This new model reduces costs and increases efficiency so that the annual audit becomes a simple formality. In his presentation, he'll cover the requirements, capabilities, and benefits of this new compliance model. There will be a Q&A session following the presentation, so we encourage you to ask any questions via the interface. And with that, let's turn it over to Mel. Thank you, Greg. Hello, and thank you for joining the webcast. This is Mel Shakir, CTO of Nitro Security. Today, I want to talk to you about a new concept, proactive compliance or continuous compliance. The phrase itself is not new and has been used to describe what it means, which is to make compliance a more continuous process rather than a reactive one. But what is new is the context of how technology can truly make compliance proactive. A lot of organizations miss the true spirit of compliance, and when they do, much money and effort is spent on being compliant when an audit is due, and then the organization quickly falls out of compliance. However, what was not possible before is now possible. Proactive compliance, which was a theor theoretical exercise, is now an achievable goal with the new technologies we have access to today. So it is up to us, all of us, whether we want to be leaders or laggards. Now, compliance does not have to be equal to an audit. Okay? There is a difference, there is enough evidence on the benefits of being proactive rather than being reactive. Proactive compliance, when plotted on a timeline, should look like the red line, which is almost parallel to the baseline. The little dips that you see are simply minor faults say in the log collection process. Operations or internal audit should get a near real-time event when something does go wrong to help correct the fault. Now is this not what security operations do or should be doing? Is this not what internal auditors should do or be doing? Making corrections as they go along instead of waiting for their quarterly or annual audits? What we are after is a, is a continuous feedback loop. So the prerequisite for proactive compliance must be real-time information gathering. How can we get continuous output if the input is discrete? Today, SIM, security information and event management products, are the enabling technology for real-time information gathering. Without a SIM, we cannot achieve proactive compliance. But that's not all what we need from a SIM. Another important step is ensuring the continuous feedback loop includes all the stakeholders, the policy owners and the policy implementers, internal audit and security operations. And how do we do that when they use different tools and talk different languages and only interact with each other discreetly for an audit? Well, we can ensure that the SIM unifies the parties and promotes collaboration, and this we can do using a unified taxonomy. SIM notifies all the parties of, on the event, whether it is a breakdown of a logging control or whether it is a threat. So things can get moving on all sides instantly. A threat should not only prompt the security operations to begin an investigation, but also prompt internal audit and the board of directors regarding the breakdown of controls. Now, of course, uh, the logging tool has to be intelligent. And SIMS 
typically have the smarts, you, can, you can't produce a, any useful information or any useful notifications simply from raw log data. If user Bob, for example, logs into an IP address 1234, it does not mean much for a person in internal audit. SIM must send a notification suggesting that Bob's access was inappropriate because the user is not an IT administrator, he's not coming from the IT admin network, but still is using privileged credentials in accessing a high risk system which he, couldn't, which he shouldn't be using. Then it becomes an actionable event and useful for achieving our goal of proactive compliance. Without context, data is raw and incomprehensible. Now, isn't one of our objectives of compliance to detect fraud and theft and have the evidence to support an investigation? But the logs you're collecting don't necessarily have all the information. Now, do you have the logs on what documents were exchanged by users? What was in the response of a database query? The contents of a webmail or a chat session? If you don't, then you are essentially blind to a significant wealth of information. However, there is ample information on the network that can be tapped into. A lot of this information is transient, and if it is not saved, it is gone forever. Therefore, incorporating database activity monitoring, application monitoring, protocol monitoring, file integrity monitoring, data leakage monitoring, all of this into the SIM becomes essential. Only then can you address questions like, how many database records were accessed and did they have cardholder data? Who did the perpetrator chat with and send emails to and what was in those emails? This, I believe, is necessary for proactive compliance. Now, how can we measure when there is unusual activity? If we, can, if we cannot have a historical context around all the activity, daily, weekly, monthly, and even on-demand baselines is the way to go about getting that answer. Baselines tell you when things are getting better or they're getting worse. And the deviation from a baseline can tell you proactively when the logging control is not working or when a user has performed actions that he usually does not. These are all events that must be noticed by policy owners and policy implementers without delay. And therefore, baselines are essential for proactive compliance. I feel the same about risk scoring. PCI 2.0 requirement 6.2 makes a case for risk-based approach. Essentially, it is telling you to focus on what's important. In this screenshot, the organization has taken the time to classify their file servers as unclassified and sensitive. Now, the SIM lets them focus and report on risk. The risk score can be on an asset, asset attributes, asset vulnerabilities, type of event, the user's roles and entitlements, or any source that can provide enrichment information. It could be a list of point of sale systems at your retail locations that have been hacked before, or based on a watch list provided by your fraud department, or from your human resources department's evaluation system, or a recent deceased, list, uh, deceased person list. Okay? So the enrichment can come from anywhere. And then you need bro broad correlation. So all the information can come together. The logs, unified taxonomy, context, content, risk-based scoring, baselines, all of it, so we can achieve proactive compliance. For example, if you could correlate that the same user is, actively, is active simultaneously from two different locations or outside his network, you can react immediately or even have the system shut him out. Most fraud is committed from stolen identities. So compliance is not an audit, and I repeat that again. What I've shown you today was not possible until recently. 
where real-time monitoring, unified taxonomy, risk-based correlation, baselines, context, content, all come together to produce a system capable of proactive or continuous compliance. Now, if you have proactive compliance, your system can tell you when and what action is needed. So let, let me talk a little bit about now, you know, how we address the challenge of Nitro security to make proactive compliance a reality. What you see now is our flagship product, the Nitro View uh, Enterprise Security Manager, which is essentially the SIM console. Then there are receivers or collectors that feed data from the different logs that you have in your environment. And another essential component of the SIM is the Enterprise Log Manager or the ELM. Okay. But this is for your long-term compliant log management. Now for smaller enterprises, all the components can be in a single box, the ESM, the Security Manager, the ELM, the Log Manager, and the Receiver which is essentially a collector for third-party logs, or they can be broken up and be on separate devices. And all these devices, they communicate through secured TLS encrypted channels. You can add SAN, NAS, uh, and utilize your storage infrastructure along with uh, the solution. Now to make the solution proactive, uh, it, we need to tap intel, into the intelligence of the network, uh, which is one of the points that I made earlier, that you, know, you need to be able to tap into the database transactions, for example. And one of the components that feeds up to the NITSM is our DBM, or the database monitor, which monitors not only queries, but often the response, did the user get 5,000 credit card numbers back? Another essential component of the SIM, which is included as part of our solution, is the NitroView application data monitor. Okay. Now this not only monitors, this, is, this technology that is actually based on deep packet inspection, the DBM, where it not intrusively monitors various different protocols and documents that are being exchanged. Okay. Chatting with whom and what's what are they chatting about? You know, who is, what is somebody sending over web mail, for example? Uh, is there potential sensitive data leaking the organization? What's happening with respect to pro different protocols? Uh, are the security policies being adhered to? For example, is somebody using MSN Messenger against, which is against our security policy? All of that information, which is not in the logs, is now derived through the packet inspection straight from the network. And finally, we also have the IPS, the Intrusion Protection System, which is a component that goes in line uh, closer to the perimeter and looks for malware, viruses, trojans, and things of that nature. And one of the things we do differently with our NitroView IPS is we also bring in flow data, okay? NetFlow, JFlow, for example. So let me now tell you a little bit about Nitro Security. Uh, we, have a, we have a pretty good growth over the past few years, and now we are starting to aggressively market outside the U.S. from our EMEA base in the U.K. Uh, we have been rated as top solutions by SE Magazine, where we acquired the number one slot, and also by InfoWorld Magazine. There's also enough uh, articles out there from Gartner and others uh, confirming the fact that we are the fastest SIM on the planet. And speed and scale become extremely important as you collect data over weeks and months and years, and you need that interaction with the system in real time for proactive compliance. And finally, here's a list of software sample customers. At this point, I'd like to hand it back 
Okay. Thank you, Mel, for a terrific and informative presentation. At this point, we want to um, ask our audience a poll question, give you a chance to respond. T today's uh, question is, have you deployed a SIM to automate monitoring to comply with PCI DSS requirement 10? There are four options, yes. No, but will during 2011. No, but considering for 2011. And no. OK. So while we're giving everyone a chance to vote in the poll, I could encourage you to uh, ask questions. Uh, there's a Q&A button at the bottom left of your screen, and um, hopefully we'll have time so that Mel can answer all of the questions. Um, the poll is now flashing, um, and it looks like 41% of people have answered no. And 33, almost 34 percent, have answered yes. Uh, people will be deploying a SIM to automate monitoring to comply with PCI DSS requirements. 16 percent say no, but considering for 2011. And seven, almost 8 percent say no, but will during 2011. Mel, do you, does that seem logical to you? These results? Yes, uh, you know, th this number accurately represents uh, what we have seen in other polls uh, as, as well. Uh, uh, so no surprise there. Okay. And then uh, we could jump over to questions. And um, uh, the first one has come in for Mel. Monitoring application logs is now a requirement for PA DSS 2.0. How can SIM help with this? So SIM uh, technology, uh, you know, which helps collect logs uh, from the sources that do generate logs, um, uh, it's not limited to only monitoring uh, your network devices and your security devices at the perimeter. Uh, more and more folks uh, are starting to use the SIM uh, to monitor their applications. Uh, because with the SIM, you already have the infrastructure that you need to be able to bring in the logs, you know, process them, uh, be able to slice and dice the information, and view it in a way uh, that makes sense. Uh, you can report upon it. Uh, and there is a bunch of different uh, uh, use cases uh, around monitoring application logs, uh, for example, you know, inside a threat uh, being one of them. Uh, now, the PADSS, of course, in, in 2.0 uh, makes it really clear that the, uh, the PCI applications themselves, they have to generate the logs, number one, uh, because there may be some applications, especially the homegrown custom applications, that may not be producing those logs. So first and foremost, it's a requirement on the vendor itself or the person who's developed the software. Uh, and second of, all, second of all, there is a guidance, a clear guidance that bring those logs in into your logging infrastructure uh, uh, and, and report upon them as well. Um, and you know, it kind of makes sense uh, because, uh, you know, all the important transactions that you're talking about uh, is within your application. Uh, so if, uh, you know, of course, that guidance, I would say, should have been as part of 1.0, uh, but now at least it's there in 2.0. Okay, thanks, Mel. Here's one's come in. How much demand for continuous monitoring and compliance do you see coming from compliance versus IT operations groups? Uh, good question. Uh, you know, the budgets are pretty much controlled uh, through compliance and security. Uh, but more and more folks are, you know, asking questions. Uh, you know, how can we leverage uh, the solution to do more and more for us? And one of the directions, of course, we talked about in question one was, you know, monitoring applications. Uh, and providing that information back for different reasons, sometimes in for business intelligence, back to the application teams. Uh, the other side of it is the same logs. They have a lot of 
uh, you know, good information that is useful for operations. Uh, you know, for example, troubleshooting applications or it could be troubleshooting devices. Uh, so, you know, as people are putting this infrastructure in, they're starting to ask the question that, you know, what, how can I leverage this tool and technology and the investment that I've already made to do more and more? And operational use cases are getting more and more important. Uh, another good example that, uh, uh, you know, that was just brought up the other day was, uh, well, I'm bringing in database monitoring logs uh, into the SIM for security monitoring. And is it possible to monitor response times uh, so that I can do some capacity planning? And the answer is absolutely yes, you can. Uh, and most of the SIMs also, uh, and the log management tools, they provide uh, you open APIs to be able to bring in pretty much any log and be able to map the metrics of your choice uh, uh, into the SIM. So yes, absolutely, you know, you must utilize uh, your SIM infrastructure for operations uh, and uh, for business intelligence as well. Okay, thanks, Mel. Can, can the Nitro SIM monitor logs from IBM AS400? Yes, uh, through partners. Uh, so there are, you know, some devices out there which require specific expertise. Uh, so, for example, you know, especially when it comes to mainframe and uh, uh, the i-series, AS400 uh, kinds of devices, uh, there are some vendors uh, that we work with very closely uh, who provide that expertise, uh, the expertise of, uh, uh, you know, bringing in information uh, from these sources uh, into standard uh, in, into a standard format, let's say like syslog. Uh, now we support uh, many different options. Uh, so one is either you can utilize our partner vendors uh, to do this conversion in real time through their agents. You also have another choice, uh, which does not cost any additional money, uh, which is essentially uh, putting in place some jobs to be able to export the data that is being generated uh, within the mainframe and the uh, AS400 systems into some form of text. Okay? So once it's converted into a text log, uh, and again, these features are natively built into these uh, uh, into the systems, uh, then it pretty much becomes a log uh, that needs to be parsed and brought into the SIM. Uh, so we have vendors um, through the entire spectrum, small and large, uh, who have gone with one one way or the other way. Some of them have used agents, and some of them uh, have chosen to, you know, cut down their expenses, or in some cases did not have a preference for an agent because it would impact their performance, and they went with uh, exporting of the logs that are generated in the mainframe in the AS400 out in a text format uh, on a scheduled basis. Some do it on a daily basis. Some do it on a, uh, you know, hourly or uh, uh, twice a day basis. And then the SIM just pretty much parses that log and brings it into, uh, uh, into the logging infrastructure. Uh, so you have two choices, real-time through agents or, uh, you know, periodical, uh, like daily or, uh, uh, or multiple times a day. Very good. And what degree of customization is available with the APIs? Well, the API is, is fairly open. Uh, so we, uh, in, in our... Uh, in our product, we have something called the Nitro Plugin Protocol. And if you choose to use the Nitro Plugin Protocol, then the, uh, the burden is on you to do the parsing and send us the message in the required format. Okay? Uh, we would assume that the log is completely parsed. Uh, that is one way to do that, and we refer to that as raw NPP or raw Nitro Plugin Protocol. Uh, now, this is advantageous when, uh, you know, especially when the log is complex, a multi-line or, you know, something uh, uh, non-standard, and you need to program your custom logic uh, and process it or, you know, extract only nuggets of useful information from otherwise uh, uh, boring logs, okay? Uh, we have been, with many customers, we find that, you know, the applications producing the logs have a lot of extra use information, uh, which sometimes is not needed. Uh, and they would write, uh, you know, code to parse out, you know, let's say the login, the log off, or access to certain important transactions from those logs 
uh, and send those over as NPP messages. Now, NPP is very open. You can utilize, uh, you know, Perl script to send the uh, information back. So it's very simple to write. We provide sample scripts. Uh, if you have expertise in C, C++, and you would rather do it that way, uh, you can use any programming language of your choice to be able to send information via NPP. Now, that's raw NPP. Now, we also provide another way uh, that you utilize NPP but send the uh, stream the information as syslog. So you essentially write a parser. Uh, it could be as simple as just, you know, tailing the file, opening the file and tailing the file. And then you, for the transport, uh, instead of using raw NPP messages, you do the transport as syslog. Now, when you do that, you can utilize the NitroView interface to create rules for parsing the messages that are now coming through a standard syslog format. Okay. Uh, so that now you have two choices using NPP. Uh, raw, you where you know the message format and you can send it that way, or you send it a syslog and then you utilize the uh, interface to create uh, some of the matching rules. Okay. Um, and there are other ways in which you can bring logs as well. Uh, uh, for example, you know, if there are some binary logs and you simply want to be able to store them uh, for long-term management, uh, uh, you know, through our uh, interface, you could create data sources to be able to bring in logs using standard FTP, SFTP, or SCP from anywhere, any source that is generating these logs. Now, going beyond that, we also have other options, actually. Uh, we have something called the, uh, you know, NitroView agents. And with the agents, we also provide a plug-in option to the agents themselves. Uh, uh, and this is also another uh, way to bring in the logs. Uh, you could program your own plugin, or we could program the plugin, um, uh, and utilize the agent, uh, agent server communication piece that is already uh, built into NitroView to bring in those logs. Now, what are the advantages of using one approach versus another? Well, the agents, uh, you know, there is a more communication and management through the NitroView interface, whereas in case of the Nitro plugin protocol, we're assuming that this is a third-party device, you know, very much like a syslog device. Who knows what it's doing? It doesn't have to be managed, and it is going to send the data that it has when it has it across NitroView. Okay, so you have all of these options available to you. Okay, thanks, Mel. What are the platform limitations for the servers used to run, install, and access the various Nitro products? Oh, okay. Um, well, the NitroView products, they come as appliances. Uh, uh, so the platform, uh, you know, is, is a moot question. Uh, nevertheless, I'll answer that uh, you know, all the Nitro platforms are standard. We use a, a Linux 2.6 kernel, but it is a, a version of Linux that is not, that we refer to as Nitro Linux. It is a very, very scaled-down version of Linux, uh, again, based on the 2.6 kernel. Uh, and the reason to have our own, uh, uh, own Nitro Linux is uh, uh, was e much easier for us to pass uh, the... Uh, 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 of the FIPS, uh, the Federal Information Processing Standard uh, uh, requirements and the common criteria as, sec as secure appliances are required to do so. Okay. Uh, so that is, Linux is a standard platform on the Nitro appliances. Now, uh, the collectors are also available as virtual machines. Okay. Now, these virtual machines, of course, uh, you know, you can deploy on a host VM, uh, uh, which may be Windows-based, or it may be Unix-based. Um, so, you know, we use VMware for that. Um, so that's another option. Now, the agents, of course. Uh, you know, the agents are available for different operating systems as well. So if you do need to utilize those agents, uh, which are, again, optional, uh, you can utilize them on any platform. Okay. Do you have any tools which will help with the vulnerability scanning requirements of PCI? Well, we don't provide the VA tools ourselves, um, but we integrate with, uh, you know, practically every vendor out there that provides a VA tool. Uh, so name them Rapid7 or Qualys or Nessus or uh, Saint. Uh, pretty much every uh, well-known vendor 
is supported natively uh, in the night review. Uh, you know, this is uh, uh, a requirement that the SIM uh, must uh, uh, must have, uh, and the re and the reason to bring that data in, yeah, of course, is to be able to uh, you know apply the right severity, the right weights uh, to the events that are occurring on your systems. Uh, so when, for example, when a, uh, and a threat uh, is against a system that is vulnerable, then we, of course, want to raise the severity within the SIM so that it appears as they the critical event on the SIM console. And uh, for that reason, we bring in information from pretty much every vendor. Uh, we also work with, uh, you know, specialized VA vendors. Um, and an example of that is NGS Quirrell, uh, which is a database VA scanner, you know, uh, most of the general purpose well-known scanners that are out there uh, they do a great job at, uh, you know, scanning the host and network scanning, but they don't always do a great job at application layer scanning or, uh, you know, authenticated checks. Um, and NGS is a good example, which does a lot of good checks in, for database vulnerability, okay? Uh, you know, roles and privileges, whether they have been assigned correctly or not, uh, and things of that nature. So we work with those vendors as well. Um, so again, uh, in short, the answer is uh, uh, we don't provide our own VA tool, but we will work with any VA scanner that is out there. Okay. And what are typical run times for common compliance reports? So the, uh, uh, the common compliance reports, for example, you know, uh, those mandated by PCI or HIPAA or, uh, you know, one of those. Um, uh, but most, uh, I, you know, most of the reports uh, will run in minutes. Uh, so, for example, if you're looking for uh, activity uh, by an administrator as required in PCI 10.2 or 10.3 uh, with all the information for the previous month, Okay, maybe you're producing a monthly report. Uh, I hope you're producing daily reports and looking at this activity daily. Uh, most of these reports will run in a matter of minutes, uh, if not seconds. Okay, um, uh, this is actually one of the core uh, uh, issues on which we, Nitro Security, entered the market uh, because of the scale, the speed, and the performance that we have to offer uh, with our product. Uh, so not only do we boast a very, uh, you know, fast collection architecture uh, where our high-end appliances like the X5, they can process incoming events at almost 600,000 events per second, which is the fastest uh, in terms of mag by magnitudes or any other competitor in the industry. But not only is the collection so fast, the reporting also is so fast. And one of the reasons why we are able to do that is because we use a proprietary uh, technology that we have developed uh, over the past two decades, uh, actually from the 1980s. Uh, uh, it's called Nitro ADB. And we leverage that technology, uh, which is used by the government and by nuclear reactors throughout the, uh, throughout the U.S. Uh, in our appliances. Uh, uh, this is a special purpose-built technology uh, that can provide very fast access speeds for reporting at the same time while it's collecting the data. Okay, uh, so that is that is one of our secret sources uh, uh, for the high performance, both the collection performance and the query performance. Okay, and we have a follow-up to that. Are you familiar with the emerging unified compliance framework, and can you explain what this is? Absolutely. Actually, uh, we are very close to that framework. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, I was just uh, talking to the uh, you know founder of uh, uh, Unified Compliance, uh, Dorian Koglas, um, just the other day, uh, and he even shared an, a, a very nice polling result with us yesterday. Uh, I'm going to talk about that as well. But uh, Unified Compliance uh, essentially uh, is a mapping uh, which takes into account all the authority documents that are out there and the citations with our, uh, that are within these authority documents. An example of that would be PCI 2.0 is the authoritative document uh, with citations, uh, you know, PCI requirement 10.2, 10.3, et cetera. Now, 
a lot of our customers, they want to be able to use the SIM tool for proactive compliance, you know, the message that we talked about today. Uh, and how do we do that? Uh, you know, so the first thing is to be able to tie the events that are occurring in your environment with, uh, with the appropriate citation in your, uh, in your, reg- uh, in your um, PCI requirement, for example. Okay. Now, we have other customers uh, that are affected by other regulations, and sometimes we have a single customer that is affected by multiple regulations. Uh, an example of that would be uh, in a hospital, which has to comply with high-tech HIPAA and PCI, uh, uh, or in the NERC and SIP uh, environment, uh, utility environment, where they have to comply with those regulations in addition uh, uh, to PCI and other regulations. Now, when that happens, uh, uh, you know, from a reporting perspective also, uh, what the customer needs is, you know, when an event occurs, they need to be able to report back in compliance terms uh, because there is a, a, a set of users or a set of stakeholders that are looking at the SIM uh, to produce reports in a language that they understand and they need to report back on, okay? Uh, so the unified compliance framework, it helps us map uh, all these different various regulations and the citations within each of these regulations back to a, a common uh, ID, okay? So we would take our uh, event or our normalization taxonomy uh, that an event occurred, uh, when you, uh, for example, a root user, uh, you know, uh, accessed a critical system, uh, and take that event and map it back to the unified compliance taxonomy which in turn maps back to each of the individual citations. Uh, and in our upcoming release, uh, the UCF framework, as we call it, is going to be built inside of uh, the Nitro uh, product line. Okay? Uh, so you can, whether you are in reports, uh, you can, through, a, uh, through the interface, uh, uh, you, you can uh, tag all the reports back uh, to um, I think you can find, uh, you know, you, you can tag back to, uh, you can filter them by PCI, for example, or uh, you can run searches and run reports uh, uh, based on uh, your requirements and citations. So, so that's how that's what the UCF is is essentially uh, helping us provide a mapping between the sim world and the compliance world and bring them together. Okay, and we're just about at the two minute warning. Um, so we have time for one more quick question. Uh, can Nitro do compliance dashboards in addition to reports? Absolutely. And, uh, in fact, our dashboards and views that we provide out of the box are very, very popular. Uh, and we ask our customers to try to take a different approach than just reports uh, because, you know, reports are something that, uh, you need to produce, uh, maybe for reporters who don't have access to the system in real time. And, uh, you know, you create uh, a text document for them to be able to review at a later date. But for anybody uh, who has access to the console, uh, you know, they, the preferred method would be through uh, views and dashboards because that is much more interactive. Uh, you don't get bombarded with all the information. It gets summarized in so many different formats. You can pivot, drill down uh, into the things that are important to you as opposed to getting a binder of information, uh, you know, with, with a lot of text in it. Uh, so we have both options. And, in fact, in our reporting, you can choose to send graphical dashboards, snapshots as a report in addition to your custom, you know, crystal report kind of reports, uh, uh, you know, which are tables. Uh, of information. So you have both options. Okay, very good. Well, with that, we're going to have to wrap it up. Um, we want to thank Mel Shakir, the CTO at Nitro Security, for his time today and a great presentation. And we thank you in the audience 